Before I get started today, I want to share with you just a bit of sorrowful news. I'm sure many of you are already aware that the father of our rector, Howell Sasser Sr., passed away this past week. The family is dealing with the change that is occurred in their life unexpectedly. The church has rallied around our rector as expected and provided support in various forms and I want to thank you for your love and your service and your care. We ask that during this time, though we want to reach out, that we limit our reaching out so that the family has the time that they need. Any condolences, concerns, anything that you wish to offer at this time, we ask that you coordinate it with the office and then we can assure that your love and your concerns are expressed to the family. Once we have more information, we will let you know. At this time, we have limited information. There will be a memorial service, but the actual uh, burial will be in Arlington, Virginia. So once we get more information, we will let you we'll know that. Thank you so much for all that you do and all that you give from your heart. As we listen to today's gospel lesson, I particularly like the part when they said he wouldn't let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Demons are always trying to say something. It doesn't matter where we are, there's a demonic force with something to say. He didn't want the demons to speak because they knew who he was. In other words, they were going to let the cat out of the bat about a man who was ready to soar. And if that cat got out of the bag too early, all chaos would break loose and goals would be harder to achieve. Those demons would have been a major distraction to the mission of Jesus. What demons are in our lives? Today, I want to talk about not demons, but soaring, both as individuals, as in our personal lives, but also as a community. What does it look like to soar? Perhaps most of us in our adult years don't give much thought to such questions anymore. But I ask you to take a moment and think about when was the last time you really felt like you were soaring through life? The image of soaring is perhaps a difficult one to perceive, but through our gospel lesson today, we are taught how to soar like eagles, flying so high up in the sky, Gliding with the wings of a spirit which could only come from a powerful and mighty God as ours. It's a feeling of being invincible, destined to complete the task of our calling. In other words, to soar, we have to keep our eyes focused on the task at hand. But before we can focus on the task, we have to be committed to the calling. 
whatever that calling is, knowing that its origin is from God. Our lesson says that after Jesus left the temple, a place where one receives instruction, a calling, a mission, he goes to the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. And bam, he's hit with a distraction. Someone with a fever. A fever. A total disruption of all stability in the human body. Fevers are wild storms of the spirit, where the body is trying to fight off an invasion of some kind. It could come from an infection, being overly fatigued, a psychological trauma, or just from having stinking thinking. Either way, a fever requires attention, and plenty of it. It's a major distraction for those who are called to deal with it. Any of you who have had little children in your care knows that when fevers arise, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> that kid is not going to shut up. And we are so concerned for them. Fevers cause chaos. If you've never been hit from left field with a major distraction in your life before, go ahead, accept an important task, get focused on it, and begin running with it you won't believe how many problems will arise and from nowhere. However, in our gospel lesson today, Jesus is teaching the secret of how to soar in the midst of a distraction. It's a short gospel, and it's a short message, but it's an important one. Because when we learn to limit the effect of the distractions upon us, we are open to the Spirit of God, which is flowing through us to complete the task at hand. And when we experience that Spirit, we soar. It doesn't mean that we have to turn our heads and neglect others in need, but it does mean that we have to make a decision to not emotionally get caught up in the chaos of others. Our task is to stay on point with God's calling. Jesus took the woman by the hand and said, get up, and moved her from one emotional state to another. So much so, that she was immediately able to do what she was supposed to do, which was serve. Isn't that what the Spirit of God does when it flows? It moves us from one state of being to another. It moves us from an unhealthy state of mind to a productive one, one in which others and we can soar. Are you ready to soar? Are we ready as a community to share the Spirit of God with others so that we help break the disabling fevers which are affecting our society? I don't have to name them. You know what those fevers are. A couple of weeks ago, we met in the parish hall around a bunch of tables to sort of take our temperatures, to see where our thoughts were in regards to doing the work of the church out there in the world. 
society is rapidly changing. And the needs of our society today are not the same as it was when we had the privilege to be Sunday morning Episcopalians. I think we all realize that now. That's why we had a meeting. And do you know what happened? St. Thomas stood up. They said, you, you know, I think we as a community can soar. I understand that we're going to have a few more opportunities to continue those discussions. And I invite you to participate again if you were there. And if you weren't there, I invite you to come and, and join in. It actually was a good time to begin soaring as a church community, we first begin by practicing soaring every day as individuals. What does soaring look like for you in your life at whatever stage of life you find yourself in right now? For many, pain. Last year at the ripe young age of 90, she completed her master's degree at the University of North Texas. She obtained her bachelor's degree at 73, age 73, which goes to show that when we limit distractions in our lives, we allow God's Holy Spirit to lift us so that we may soar. Go, Manny, and thank you for that reminder. So are you ready to find out what the secret is that I told you about? Okay, here it is. Listen closely, because I'm only going to say it one time. The secret to soaring that Jesus wants us to know, and the one that many has mastered, is this. Remember who we are. For we are the children of God. Let nothing distract us for too long. For just by reaching out our hands, we can move chaos to calm and do things that others cannot. Because we are the children of God. Do you believe it? Yes. Many did. Amen.